Hey, I'm Matt McKenzie, and today I'm going to go over uh, creating an Azure AD application uh, proxy um, so that you can access uh, a web server uh, or web application uh, that's on prem uh, or locked down uh, that you can't use port forwarding um, from a firewall to do. So you can lock, uh, lock it down and have it only accessible for specific users via Azure AD or you can pass through uh, the website where you don't have to enter in any uh, pre-auth credentials. Um, some of the requirements you'll need for it, you'll need a certificate um, from you know one of the public uh, certificate authorities. Um, you'll need to set up DNS or at least uh, a host file entry. Uh, for an application proxy to point correctly to your application and of course you'll need to install the application proxy agent um, so first things first uh, you can go to uh, intro.microsoft.com or uh, aad.portal.azure.com um, to go in to get to set up an enterprise application um, so once you get over to enterprise applications um, you'll go in and go to new application and you'll say create your own application. You'll give it a name. Um, we could call, uh, call this really anything, dev test, whatever, but um, for, for the sake of doing it, we'll call it uh, vCenter. Um, I tested it out with doing vCenter since that seemed to be a, a hot topic uh, lately where people had their vCenters port forwarded uh, right out to the internet. Um, and then we'll configure an application proxy for secure remote access. Um, so we'll go ahead and do create. It's going to go in, it's going to ask us for a name. I'll call it vCenter. And our internal URL will be our vCenter2.com. And our external URL will also be vCenter. Uh, actually, we'll just go with uh, da, 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 da. yeah. I guess we'll do vCenter. And so once we got uh, our URL uh, information in, our internal is going to be. Uh, vcenter.birminghamit.com our external is going to be vcenter.birminghamit.com um, and what you'll have to do is uh, is set up a C name using your public DNS um, you know vcenter.birminghamit.com uh, you know whatever your domain name is whatever your prefix is um, so you're doing a C name um, and so C name is just basically a, a name pointer. It's not an A record, so you're not putting an IP address. But they've got in here for mine, for instance, has a uh, custom one. It's probably all going to end with msx msapproxy.net. Um, so once you get that entered in, entered in, then you'll uh, you'll be able to to have it created. You'll also have to go back in once we create this to add a certificate. Um, the other part we're missing, we'll need to go in and download a connector, um, which we can go ahead and do. Um, to go ahead and do that, uh, you'll go up to Application Proxy uh, underneath the uh, Enterprise Applications section. Um, and then by default, you have a default group. You'll have to download it. Uh, the Application Proxy only works on Windows Server OS uh, 2012R2 or later. Um, so we can go ahead and download that. There we go. And we've got a server up. There we go. All right, 
run this real quick. And so if you didn't have uh, the ability to set uh, DNS on the server, um, you could go in and go to the host file and set it there if you had to. Um, it's not ideal. It's better to set it up in there uh, in DNS. And so it's going to ask you to sign in so uh, you can uh, you know, connect it up with your tenant. So I'll do that here real quick. Okay, and once that's done, it's all finished there. And so we're good on the remote server. So we've got that done. Uh, that anymore. And so it should show up in the list of our defaults and have its public IP address. I'm not gonna show it on mine because I don't care to show my uh, public IP address. Um, Okay, and then back over here, we'll go ahead and create uh, our enterprise application now that uh, we've got our app proxy, and then we'll get our certificate added. Um, and like I said, don't forget about adding the C name for whichever public uh, DNS entry you have so that you can have uh, the correct app proxy set up in the C name. So, Okay, and now that the application is completed, um, it's got it now where we can add our SSL certificate. So we'll go ahead and add our certificate. And uh, one thing you will need to know, uh, it is gonna be a PFX uh, format because it wants the private uh, password, private key password. Um, on it, so you'll need to make sure you export it. Um, so if you're doing this from a Windows web server, just make sure you export the certificate from IIS um, and make sure you export it with a password on it. If you're on a Linux, the same uh, same uh, applies there uh, to export it to get the certificate private key. Um, that way you can add it in. So I'll go ahead and add it in. And of course, I went with a wildcard uh, certificate, um, especially if you're going to be doing quite a few of the application proxies, you know, might make sense. Hey, internal, I've got to add the certificate. External, I've got to add the certificate. Wildcard seemed to make sense uh, for multiples. Um, plus vCenter, um, I found out, does not like... Um, having a wildcard certificate. Uh, it actually, uh, the easiest way I guess I found on um, going into setup uh, that, here we can go over that here real quick. Um, okay. Using out of the box for homework. Um, is going into the admin certificates section and you're going to the machine cert and you do uh you can generate a csr to take to your certificate authority you know one of the public ones you could do you know there's uh, godaddy did you sir there's there's a bunch of different ones out there um and then once you get through your csr get your certificate request made um, then you can go to import and replace and then you'll use the second option and it'll prompt you for uh, the two certificates, one being the, uh, you get like a, a CRT, uh, you can rename it to CER. Um, and then you'll also get the um, intermediate, oh, I think, uh, here, let me just click through it. Yeah, so you'll need the intermediates uh, trusted root certificate chain. Um, so you can get that uh, in that same zip file that you'll get. So once you get those two items, at least for, uh, for vCenter, um, you can update it with, a, the correct, uh, URL. Make sure you name your vCenter, um, 
before you go through the process so that you can get the correct name you want uh, set on your vCenter, um, if, at least if you're doing it for your vCenter. Um, back to at least the app proxy side of it. Um, this is also where you can set your pre-authentication. Um, and so you can decide, hey, am I going to do Azure Active Directory or am I going to just go pass it through and let anybody technically get to it and then rely on the authentication process for the application? Um, this isn't uh, SSO. This is just pre-auth. So in other words, say if you had a specific website like vCenter, <laughs> maybe you only want to assign it to a handful of users to be able to access off-site so then you go into users and groups and assign uh, either that group or those you know few set of users and then from outside of your on-prem environment they would then go to vCenter uh, you know or whatever you know prefix you've got on your domain uh, they would go to this this URL uh, that you've set up for your app proxy and they would be required to sign in using their Azure AD credentials uh, to get in. And then once they're there, they're actually relayed then over using the uh, app proxy agent um, to your internal web app. Um, and then from there, they can access uh, the web page securely without having to do VPN, without having to do poor forwarding. Um, so it can be very convenient to, to manage and monitor. Um, the other thing that Microsoft uh, suggests is that you have uh, multiple app proxies in case, you know, say for instance, you have, uh, an, you know, you're doing maintenance on the server that the app current app proxy is on, or if there's an outage and you can't access it uh, to get that uptime. So um, that's, uh, that's how to do an application proxy. Um, hope you enjoyed, like my video, subscribe. Um, thanks for watching.